Chaplain Dell here again, uh, doing some more thinking about who is the Lord and who are not the Lord's. As we all know in the scriptures, Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice. Uh, and as a matter of fact, only his sheep hear his voice. The people that are not his will not and cannot hear the voice of the Lord within them. Now, again, this is talking about a very, very intimate and personal thing. We're not just talking about the soul, but we're talking about the holies of holies, where God lives in our spirit. And this cannot be, if you really, if, if you really uh, move intuitively, you will realize that this cannot be a mass, dealing with the masses, it cannot be a herd mentality. It cannot be a flock mentality. It has to be an individual leading and an individual word that are given to each and every sheep that belongs to the Lord that are truly his people. And church, the whole idea of the structured church, although well-intentioned to bring the gospel to the world, and in fact it has, uh, brought the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ to the world, salvation of the cross, the church age, which I believe is uh, rapidly drawing to a close. Um, we have to start refocusing on who the Lord leads us to. Who is our brother? Who is our sister? We cannot be casting our spiritual fruit, our pearls before swine. So how do you not cast your pearls before swine by realizing who is of the Lord and who is not. And the problem is when you get into large structured institutions, church bodies that are, are normally called, where you open the doors to everybody, oh, everybody come to our church. Everybody, you know, is open to partaking in the communion. Now, a lot of them at least have the common courtesy is that if you don't know the Lord, then let the cup pass before you okay but um i have found for the most part that uh when you deal with people it, it's always on an individual basis as the lord leads you personally to move and speak to them and this is the thing that an institutionalized organizations destroys you cannot uh have a uh the masses of people and one size fits all theology. If you truly move in the Lord Jesus Christ and the power of the Lord Jesus Christ as he leads you to move. And this had, this all has also has to do with dealing with individuals. You have to meet the individual where they are. You, if they're truly your brother or sister in the Lord, you have to lend an ear to them. You have to, you have to be prayed up. You have to say, Lord, Help me to focus on what this person is saying. Help me to see. Help me to give them guidance. This is a very, very intimate and personal thing you're dealing with as a minister, quote unquote minister. And uh, we can't do this with, with masses. We can't have a herd mentality. Okay, everybody sit and sing. Everybody, uh, or, or stand and sing. Everybody sit and pray or whatever. It's, uh, it, it's not a herd mentality. I'm sorry. And this is traditional amongst the church and i'm sure i'm sure it'll make a lot of people angry but if you really think about it jesus christ always dealt with individuals look at any of jesus jesus's ministries he always dealt with individuals as the lord led him to deal with individual people that the father like he told peter Flesh and blood didn't reveal this to you, but my father who is in heaven, when he asked him, and who do you say I am? And he said, I say you are the Christ, the only begotten son of God. Okay, so again, this was the personal level that Jesus was uh, communing, communicating with to Peter. You didn't see, even on the Sermon on the Mount, he didn't get up there and, and, and talk to all the men. Said, oh, wasn't that a beautiful sermon? Everybody understood it and applauded him. No. They said, why do, you, why do you speak in riddles? Why do you speak in parables? And Jesus said, because it's not for your ears to hear. 
It's only for the ones that the Father gives unto me. And this is <clears throat> this is a trap for uh, for young Christians in particular who fall into the trap of wanting to be accepted, wanting to find a body of believers, a fellowship commonly called the church. And when they get in there, they can't find anybody that will talk to them one-on-one, -on -one, that will talk to them individually, that will uh, enter into them in the Holy of Holies and discuss the very personal and intimate things of God. Uh, I have been around a lot of pastors that, uh, I mean, they can give you a head full of theology, a head full of uh, scripture, uh, quoting scripture at you, but they, I've met very few that can say, oh, I've been there. I know exactly where you are on a spiritual level. Let me, let me speak to you. This, this was my experience with this, or this was my experience in that. Let me, uh, relay to you, uh, uh where I think you're going to go next, where, what the kind of things that you're going to see next. Only a true follower of Christ can do those things. Any, any intellectual can study, uh, um, theology and, uh, and, uh, you know, uh, apply the golden rule uh, to people on a natural level. But on a spiritual level, we must fellowship in that intimacy. And you cannot do this with a herd mentality. Bigger is not better. Um, no, it's the personal, very personal revelations that we who hear his voice receive. And we share those that with others who hear his voice. And we don't share those things with people who do not hear his voice. And this is something that uh, I'm starting to see. If Jesus Christ only works on a personal level to his sheep, speaks to his sheep in his way, and we follow him, then how can we have a herd mentality? Uh, I don't know, in some cases, hundreds and hundreds of people in a building and stand up and then preach the word of God and have everybody receive it. Um, it just doesn't happen. These, these big ministries, uh, for instance, uh, years ago, years ago when I discovered that uh, I could hear the Lord speak to me in a very personal, intimate way, I was very excited with that because this was the real power of the Lord within me. Okay, this is being truly one of God's sheep called and chosen as God's um, <clears throat> one of the Lord's sheep one of the Lord's vessels. And I was really excited about this. And, uh, but, I, but I could never hear anybody talk about how the Lord spoke to them on a personal level. Uh, God did provide people for me, very, very few and far in between that did know how to hear and walk in the Lord. And I'm very thankful for that, how they mentored me and they trained me up and taught me because only, only could I learn what it was like to walk in the spirit is by being around others who could indeed walk in the spirit. But most of your church pastors, quote unquote, uh, had no idea what I was talking about. And this is because they do not or have not developed a personal spiritual walk uh, definitively with the Lord to be able to hear him and follow him. Because if they had had, develop that and then they could share with others who are new in into that thing into newly hearing the Lord now um, I'm trying to remember the pastor's name now first I can't remember but it was um, it was uh, the pastor's heart he does uh, Charles Stanley dr. Stanley and he did tapes about hearing the Lord and how and, and how we can hear the Lord and I was very excited with that my purchases audio tapes to let my wife see, and I say, see, see, this guy knows what he's talking about, about, about all the church groups out of there. This was about the only man that I ever saw put forth any uh, audios or teachings in this area, which is very, very sad. And the rest of them are doing a herd mentality. You know, one size fits all. Uh, a generic gospel that fits everybody. But Jesus never dealt with people like that. He always even spoke in parables. They asked him, why do you speak in parables? He said, because it's not for your ears to hear. Okay, it was only for the ones that the Father gave him. And this was very, very destructive in my Christian walk 
was to try to um, uh, find other Christian men of God, like Dr. Stanley, and I have great respect for, for a lot of his teachings, probably most of his teachings. But the thing that killed me was I could never make any personal contact with individuals such as this because they're too busy. It's kind of like a, it's kind of like a, a, a dairy farm or, or cattle ranch. And there's, there's so, you know, big corporations. There's so many of them. They don't have time to deal with one individual cow or sheep. You know, uh, I don't know too much about sheep ranching, but I understand that uh, sheep can get very sick nowadays because they no longer have the resistance to a little worm uh, that grows on the uh, on the grass in the early morning when they feed because the antibiotic in large quantities, excuse me, uh, by mass, these these different sheep and the ones, uh, so they, so the natural immunity that's there uh, quickly dies off and the sheep uh, don't no longer have the natural immunities because of the great amount of antibiotics that were pumped into the masses of, of sheep. So they die quickly because if you mass feed people, which is what the churches started doing, they open their doors to everyone, as we know, most of the time. Um, it, the, the ones that really, uh, would have had Christ, uh, and walked with the Christ as opposed to the ones that are not his, um, they get lost. They get lost or they die off. And I don't know that I'm making a very good analogy here, but the whole point is, is that you cannot, uh, the gospel is not for the masses. I mean, the gospel may be for the masses and preaching the gospel if you're called to evangelism. But the whole point is that you're to listen and be led of your Lord alone. It's not a mass, you know, assembly. It's a, a fellowship of one-on-one. -on -one. And, and how, can, uh, how can we minister to people unless we can take the time to speak to them on a personal level, one-on-one -on -one as, as the Lord leads us? Um, and it's very destructive when you cannot find that when you have the spirit of the Lord in, in dwelling you, you truly are one of his and you desperately seek fellowship and you cannot find it because there's these great herds of other sheep, really goats, uh, and you just don't fit in. So really you're, uh, you might as well go off and die unless you can find some true fellowship, some people that truly hear and follow the Lord Jesus Christ on a personal level. This is why you can't make some big mega church and expect to lead people to Christ, to walk people in the spirit of Christ because Christ works individually with the individual in the individual spirit. This is nonsense. This mass produced assembly line gospel. Jesus Christ never worked that way and men who claim his name shouldn't be working that way. And I have I've tried desperately over the years to talk to big name ministers who I won't mention. Uh, and they were so big that all I got was the churchy church are responsible. Thank you for writing the pastor. Please order some of our tapes or please, you know, and they would never even share, uh, share some of the stories that people would write to them. Like for instance, on the radio. And the problem is because they're too big. They're too big. Um, uh, and you can't minister to people um, by thinking, you know, bigger is always better. No, it's that pure truth of God that we're to seek and find and fellowship with people that are truly his. And uh, that comes at a cost. It comes at a cost of, uh, of, um, of um, excluding people that are not. And even Jesus said this why he spoke in parables. Few that it will be that find me. Many will come to the that day saying, Lord, Lord, did we prophesy in your name? Did we cast out demons? And Jesus says, depart from me, I never knew you. The narrow way, few that it will be that find me. And it's narrow because it's a personal thing and you can't do it uh, as applied to just the masses. Which doesn't make it popular in the world, does it? All right, God bless and I hope this helps somebody. Bye.